Hi everyone. During the summer you see lots of people riding around on e-bikes like this or an electric bike. Uh, for those that don't know it's got a motor on it, a small DC motor and there you go. Pull the throttle and away you go. But of course when the rainy season comes you don't see many people riding around on them including me. So I thought what can I do with this during the rainy season? I don't want to just let it sit and basically let the batteries die and just pretty much rust away. So I thought how about using it as an exercise bike? Create something that can raise the back and hold it in place so you can cycle indoors and at least get some exercise. And I thought well why not modify the electronics as well so that it can be a generator to charge a battery or to I don't know maybe power a TV while you're exercising something like that. So today that's what we're going to try. Now I haven't made any plans for this, uh, I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it, I have a rough idea of what I want to do but we're pretty much going to be making it up as we go along. Now even if you have a hub motor electric bike or if you have a separate DC motor underneath like mine your steps if you want to replicate this are going to be pretty similar so it should be useful. Of course some of the electronics are going to be slightly different, different color wise and so on but overall it's going to be the same basic idea. Now for anyone thinking I'm crazy for wearing white when I'm working on this because of course there's grease and dirt everywhere, this shirt's already full of stains so I'm not worried about that. So let's bring the camera closer and work out what we're going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the saddle so that we can get access to the battery because we need to remove the battery. Remove my keys. Okay now let's remove the battery. If you're curious this is made up of two batteries, uh, 12 volt 7 amp hour lead acid so it's very heavy. Now that I've removed the battery you can see the contacts where the battery was. So the first thing we'll want to do is try and measure voltages while we spin the motor to see if any power is being transferred directly to those power pins. So the first thing I'm going to do is raise the bike. So now it's sitting on there I can manually turn the back wheel which turns the motor at the bottom and that will allow us to measure if there's any voltages on these pins. So after probing various different combinations I haven't been able to get voltage from the motor so certainly nothing is coming up. Uh, I imagine that's because the electronics inside aren't designed for that um, and I guess they don't want you having raw power from the motor going straight into the battery because if you're going downhill or something like that you could end up putting a very high voltage straight into the battery. I doubt it would be an issue but yeah anyway we've got no power coming up through there. So the next thing I'm going to do is take off this panel and get access to the electronics inside. So it turns out I don't have to take this off after all, I can just slide off this side plate here. And here you can see the motor controller, pretty small but it's only, um, it's only a small motor. You see this is rated up to 250 watts and then we've got our wiring inside. Some of this goes off to light, some of it goes off to the throttle. Um, this is all pretty much factory standard. Now if I follow this cable here from the motor I can see it comes up here follow it around and here we go this is straight from the motor so first thing we want to do is get access to these connections now this mod um, I want to do in a way that when summer comes I can easily put it back to being a normal e-bike rather than a generator so I have to consider that whatever I do should be easily reversible okay there we go. So now we've got our connectors from the motor, straight from the motor. So we're not going through the speed control or anything else, the motor driver. It's literally just straight from the little motor here. So here's my meter. I'll just hold it on here. And then I'll try to spin the wheel, which will turn the motor. Okay, we've got about three and a half volts. I mean at some points it's overloading so we're getting a very high initial rush. Let's try again. Ready? Yeah see it's going to over voltage or overload and then it's coming down so it's initially a very high voltage. So anyway, we know we're definitely getting power off. What I'm going to do now is actually connect a LED strip to this, spin it and see how bright it goes, just to give us a rough idea of if we're generating enough power to actually make this whole project worthwhile. Now I figured instead of starting with something like an LED strip, which is relatively easy to power, let's try and turn on this 12 volt bulb. Now this is pretty old school um, and very power hungry. 
This is a compressor that you use in your vehicle to pump up your tires, but it also has the bulb built in. So we're gonna try and power that on. So let's put this on light and then I'll connect our wires here. I'm gonna assume that red is positive. And I'll connect that to our cigarette lighter jack. So positive, negative, okay. And then we'll just hold this here and we'll try spin the wheel. Okay, we got something. Bear in mind that I'm not even using my legs here. I'm just using my hand to spin this thing. Um, so I'm not getting a lot of force in it. Now we're gonna try the same again to light up this bulb, but this time we're measuring how many amps it's consuming. Now, I know this isn't terribly useful because we don't have the voltage at the same time as the amps, but it's interesting anyway, so let's go ahead. So you can see I'm hitting about half an amp if I give it a good push with my hand. A little bit higher even so I think there's enough power there for us to consider it worthwhile and to continue with this project so what I'm thinking is to use a switch like this when it's switched one way the motor will be connected to the motor controller and will be operating as a regular e-bike when it's switched the other way the motor will be completely disconnected from the internal electronics and will come out to us that we can use as a generator so what I'm thinking is I'm going to take the positive of the motor and have that going through the switch and then the ground will be shared between the speed controller or motor driver and our external generator. Now when it's in a regular e-bike mode this is how the wires are. So the first thing I'm going to do is chop off this one and this one, these connectors here, so that I can put these connectors on so that we can put it straight onto the switch here. So as you can see, the idea is that you put your wire in there, like that. Then you're going to crimp it down, and then that will just slide over the contact of this. I'll bring it closer so you can see. It slides over the contact. It's a very tight fit, so you really have to struggle to push it on. Um, in fact, if I push it on, I might not get it off again. So I'm not going to do it, but trust me, you push it on there, and then that's going to be very, very tight on there. Now these are not a crimping tool, they're for cutting metal, so you might be thinking I'm crazy, but they really do put a lot of force on whatever you're squeezing, so I'm hoping I'll be able to use them because I don't have a proper pair of crimpers. I've tried pliers on this before, but I never really get a good finish, so these can really put down a lot of force, so I think they're going to be more reliable. So there we go. Nice, tight, secure no problems and I'll probably put a bit of tape around there just to make sure 100% it stays in place since I didn't use a proper crimping tool. Now I'm going to put one coming off the motor driver again crimp it with the metal cutters not recommended I know but it's all I've got that can do this okay nice secure fit again and again I'm going to put a bit of tape around it so let's try and connect this up to the switch. We have this one coming from the motor, which we want in the middle since that's going to be shared. Okay. It's on there. It's a very, very tight fit. Okay. And then we want the one from the speed controller or motor driver to go to this side. There you go. Now that's a nice, tight, secure fit and it's completely covering any conductor so you don't have to worry about a short. For the other side of the motor, I'm going to remove the connectors again. I'm going to add a piece of wire and then I'm going to connect them all using this kind of screw-on wire connector. So this is my first time trying one of these connectors. I don't know if it's the right size. We'll find out if we can fit all three wires in there. Seems like it would be difficult, but fingers crossed. Let's make sure we've got all all three wires equally on there and then screw it on okay it seems like we got them all so this will be our negative coming off the motor and we'll get our positive through this switch so now I'm going to crimp this connector onto this piece of wire which will go to the switch 
So we'll just crimp it again with this. Okay. Nice, tight, secure connection, but I will put a piece of tape over that again. And let's connect the wire to the switch. There we go. So before we go any further, let's have a look at what we've actually done. We've taken the wire from the motor, the positive and negative, and we've cut off the connectors. We now have the ground going here. So not only does it go to the driver, but we also have our own wire coming off. We have the positive going through to a switch. When we switch it one way, it will come out to our wire. So then we would have our negative and our positive. And then as long as we drive the motor by you know, physical uh, exercise, we'll get power coming out. If we switch it the other way, it will be just as if it was a regular e-bike and the internal electronics are hooked up to the motor. Now before I go any further, I want to actually test these connections and make sure that everything works as expected. So I'm going to use my multimeter to measure some voltages. I'm just using these crocodile clips to connect the wires. So here's the meter. What we should see in this state is that we don't have any voltage change. Okay. That's correct, no voltage change. But once we flick this switch down here, we should start seeing a voltage. There you go, did you see that? It went up to 10 volts. So we know that all of our connections are working as expected. If we put it this way, it's acting as a regular e-bike. If we put it in the middle, it doesn't actually do anything. So it could even be used as an anti-theft device, although it'd be pretty simple to work out what you need to do. If we put it this way, we have a generator. Now I'm gonna draw a hole in this cover so that we can have our switch coming through. Very simple. So it's not the prettiest hole, but it does the job. Switch slides in like that. This little cover goes over this way and then we just bolt it in place. Now I was thinking to use connectors like this because they would look quite tidy on the outside and it'd be easier to use banana plugs or just to put a wire in here and bolt it down. But the problem is all of the internals are exposed so there is a potential for something to short out. Although maybe that's not such a big concern because all of this wire is insulated. Um, yeah, maybe it could work actually. So I'm going to take this switch back out so that I can drill the holes for the terminals. So it's very easy to fit these, you just make your hole, push through the connector, put your tab on the inside which is where you're going to solder your wire, then you put your washer on and then your nut. And obviously you can tighten this up with a spanner, I'll just do them hand tight for now. So you can see this would be our connector, so we can either use banana jacks putting in there or we can connect our wire in these holes and then tighten it up to hold it in place. So it should look pretty tidy once we've got the switch back in there. Now before I solder the wires, I'm gonna put some heat shrink tubing over them so that once I connect them to the tab here, I can put the heat shrink tubing and at least cover some of the exposed inductors. And now to connect our wires to the taps. So that's one wire soldered on. Let's solder on the next one. Both wires are now soldered to the terminals so we can slide the heat shrink tubing down over the contacts to try and insulate as much as possible. And I'll do the same on the other one once this solder joint cools down a bit. Let's heat the tubing so that it shrinks. And there we go. We've got nice finished connectors, secure, and we don't have to worry about anything shorting out. Now you'd probably want to use some kind of thread lock on this because being inside a bicycle, especially in the Philippines for me, it's going to be really bumpy. So these will probably come loose. So yeah, consider some kind of thread lock or some kind of glue to hold those in place. So now I'm going to put my switch back through. You can see things are starting to become a little bit more complicated with so many wires. I want to do this in a way that doesn't put too much strain on the wire. And I'll just screw this one back in place. So there's the finished piece. We have our switch, we have our output terminals, and we can easily switch between a normal e-bike and a generator output. So now I have to try and get everything back in there. Hopefully this won't be too difficult. Well, of course, nothing is ever that easy. This switch 
is so large that it's actually causing an issue fitting this in. Yes, I didn't consider this, did I? There is not enough space for our new switch. Now I could find another switch which is smaller, but I want to try and get at least the electronics of this project done today, so I'm going to have to come up with another solution. What I probably should have done is made a small control box which has the switch and these terminals and put that going up on the back of the bike somewhere. Okay, so <laughs> that took quite a lot of effort, but eventually I managed to get everything back inside and I put the battery back in place. Um, pretty much I want to never ever have to open this up again, so I really hope everything is secure because that was so difficult to get everything inside. Anyway, let's, um, let's connect everything up and see if it still works. Now I have a low battery, so I'm going to put that on charge. See, that's what this cable is here. So right now it's on the off position, our switch, and I've got the bike turned on, and I'm going to try and turn the throttle. You, I don't know if, you, obviously you can't see me turning the throttle, but nothing's happening. If I put it in this position, you can see it still works as an e-bike. If I put it back in the off position, nothing happens. And if I put it in this position, we should be able to get power out of this. So if I try the accelerator, nothing happens. Now let's connect a load on this and manually turn the wheel and see if we're generating power. So I'm going to connect some crocodile clips to the outlets. And then I'm going to connect the other side to the lamp that we used earlier as a test load. So now we've got our switch in the generator position. We've got our crocodile cables going from the two terminals here to this lamp. And I'm going to manually turn the wheel, which will turn the motor and generate power. So let's try. Did you see that light up? I'll just move the pedals forwards again. You can see it lights up. Of course, we're not generating much power at the moment, but we're turning the wheel manually. So, you know, you're only going to expect so much. So I think I'm going to call it a day there for part one of this. We've basically done all the electricals and everything works as we want. Now, if you had a hub motor, this project would pretty much be finished. All you'd have to do is create something uh, like a stand to hold the bike off the floor. Then you would sit on it, start pedaling and it would work fine. In my case, things are a little bit more complicated because I have the pedals which drive the wheel and the motor is actually completely independent. So I'm gonna have to screw around with the chains so that the pedals actually drive the motor directly instead of driving this wheel. Now that does complicate the whole idea of having a switch where you can just have it from e-bike to generator because I'll also have to screw around with the chain. But to be honest, I'm only gonna do it you know, once or twice a year. When summer comes, I'll set it up as an e-bike. And then when rainy season comes, I'll set it up as an exercise bike stroke generator. So if you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and remember to subscribe so that you can see the next one. In the next one, we're gonna take the chain apart and try and directly drive the motor. And I think we're gonna come up with some way of making a stand for this. Now, I'm not sure yet if it's gonna be a wooden stand, which I can make myself, um, or a welded metal frame, which I'd have to go somewhere and get someone to make. Uh, I'm still not 100% sure which support areas we can you know connect to but um we'll come up with something so i'll see you in part two